At two separate public events recently, the Chief Executive Officer of the National Institution for Transforming India laid great emphasis on health and education. India, he stressed, cannot register high growth for long without a good education and health care network and for a good education system. We must assess performance on a real-time basis. This can be achieved by creating a benchmarking framework to compare states with the aim of improving their performance in education. That is easier said than done as our education system has complexities such as multiple education boards, different assessment systems, a limited understanding of a quality, a mismatch between public funds and performance and conflicting theories on benchmarking itself. One school of thought favors measurements as a necessary ingredient for better management but another feels being obsessed with measurements can lead to data manipulation, over-regulation and undermining of learning theories. It is a different matter that a robust measurement system of any public scheme does not exist or if it does, it is poor. The result is that policies are designed either whimsically or on common sense basis. One can imagine the consequences of this. The moot point is, can there really be a benchmarking framework that gets the best out of states while ensuring that state specificities are not compromised and states adhere to a set of national objectives while keeping the learner at the center. The answer surprisingly is yes. We do not know yet when the new policy will be out but it can start by creating a fairly robust benchmarking system premised upon key national objectives. To begin with, the policy can spell out a clear definition of what quality education means. The policy would do well by defining quality education holistically as a combination of inputs, processes and outcomes. Similarly, learning also needs to be looked at holistically to include learning for development of identity, development of the capacity to live in society and development of skills or even learning capacities. These parameters must be broken down into measurable indicators but this should be done by the states. The lessons from UNESCO's International Standards of Classification of Education will be of immense value to get states on board proactively. In the Indian scenario, the UNESCO system can be used effectively by mapping state specific education programs. Mapping of different criteria across states on elements such as entry levels and education structure can allow measurement of indicators. Alternatively, each state can develop its own theory of change. These may not be identical, but from different theories, a common theory of a change can be culled out and some major common indicators can be used to compare the effectiveness of the educational programs of each state. Needless to say, data gathering will be the key. The data from the District Information System for Education and National Sample Survey Organization are not very relevant for states 
and the enrollment data is mostly biased multiple data sources need to be consulted to cross validate the data this means creation of a strong monitoring capacity at the sub national level the new development monitoring and evaluation office of the national institution for transforming india can help in this on conflicting opinions about benchmarking's merits the key aspect to remember is that it should not lead to over monitoring over regulation or standardization the global monitoring report 2005 highlights this concern and advocates a balanced approach between socio cultural realities of learners their aspirations and well being of the nation regarding assessments there is a need to link them with curriculum and pedagogy assessments are not useful if they are not able to provide feedback into improving the educational system linking assessments with pedagogy and curriculum can facilitate a shift from an approach of monitoring to a meaningful diagnosis last benchmarking must have a safety valve against political impulses as states may be tempted to understate their performance to get more central resources while on the other hand they may inflate their achievements for political gain the best way to build a safety valve is to increase the state's autonomy to govern their own educational systems in this context reduction of a central funding to states seems the correct step but it will remain incomplete if the states fail to get their act together health and education educational system we must real time benchmarking framework mismatch consequences central resources national institution for transforming india national sample survey organization